You can hear me OK? OK, um, I'll go with it then. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, any of the options that you take here are going to be good. It's just a matter of what we said before, getting the option that fits you very well. And what we do down here in the art room, just across from music and just across from uh, the drama room, is we make stuff. And some stuff just came in this morning, and it's just amazing um, what uh, some of the kids are up to these days. Uh, they're just, we make stuff, and the kids surprise themselves every day. You can see behind me a big dinosaur that was being made in a King Kong. And they're halfway done, but the kids learn so much through trial and error. They learn on the job. They learn as they go. So if you can start the um, slideshow, I won't let you talk. Look at me, but I will show you this that one kid made, a uh, student made, and then she made a big giant um, mascot head afterwards just from what she learned in here. So go ahead. If we're on the slideshows, that'd be fantastic. I believe we are. OK, so what we're going to do is um, we have five options for you to take in in fine art. Uh, we have uh, art 10, which is our foundational class. Um, we want you to consider the other four as well. But like I said, any of the options you take in the creative arts is is a good choice. So fine art, uh, the first thing that you'll learn is how to draw and you start drawing by we give you the layout of the basic uh, forms and teach you how not to overdraw, but to just lightly, lightly, lightly. You don't outline. You just get through uh, everything in the right place. You don't have to move it around. Then we get into adding texture and the texture is a little bit of a mind warp for some kids. They want a color and and no, it's it's a little bit different. Su super deadly sharp pencils and then just um, you learn how to add the, the basic shapes onto um, other shapes and then all of a sudden you're drawing without outlines and it looks really well. The um, the skulls should be coming up. Yeah, there you go. And that was a grade 10 student. And once the light turns on, they realize that they can draw this way. Um, we can't stop them. It's our job then just to give them more work and get out of their way. It's a little bit of a mind warp for some kids. And there's a, an old uh, classic cartoon that um, the guy's standing at the bank and the bank teller says, I'm sorry, sir, you're overdrawn. And sometimes kids want to work so hard they don't realize by laying off a little bit and a little bit of strategy, they can get far more benefits and results. So that's kind of the, the joke in here. I'm sorry, you're overdrawn. But then the kids pull back and they start making things like what you're seeing on the screen now. Grade 10 work. Um, I can't draw this well, but they draw more than I do. They draw an hour and a half a day and we have lunchtime and tutorial and after school a couple of times a week. And some of the work is just phenomenal. And they didn't know they could do it. Some of them come in with a lot of talent. Some of them um, come in and they just go, no, I learned this here. And it's like, OK, I can't draw that well, child. Good for you. And they just keep uh, producing work. Confidence gets grown. Uh, they understand how to do things that they never thought um, they could by sort of suspending their disbelief and trying maybe failing a couple of times, not making things as perfect as they want. But then it turns on, the light bulb goes on and they can draw amazingly well. And we're super proud of our kids in, in all the options. And you know, I'm kind of like the ones down here who can draw this well. We also do watercolor and it's the same process. We start with basic shapes and then we just practice, practice, practice. And it's fun practice because you get to talk to friends. And this is how we're set up now with COVID. We have little uh, booth dividers and kids are wearing masks. But then when they start drawing, after they get the basic shapes and the three dimensional forms done, they can then do skin tones and then they can do um, cloth and then they put the, them together and we can do animals. So we do, do a lot of practicing and the whole idea is just do it till you get it right and you've got all the time that you need and then let's let's do some more. So we copy a lot of work from historical records. Uh, this is from people going to, uh, excuse me, Australia and people understanding um, that they have to record things as they see them. We also go into historical photographs from uh, Josef Karsh and other Canadian photographers. And then we have some fun with, you know, good old Hollywood monsters and Audrey Hepburn. And we change the colors around just to make sure that, you know, the kids are having fun. Once we're done with watercolor, we can get into pen and ink. 
which um, doesn't come out of clothes. So make sure your, your student has some uh, a smock or something, but then the students can get into detail. They can do more personal exploration, tough word for me. They can work on thin lines and thick lines in a different media medium. Um, we also have the FLIR card um, that's coming up every year and FLIRs are our partner corporation and they were really good in 2009. They asked us if they could take a student image and put it on a winter card and then they came up with the idea of making this an annual um, competition and our kids it's a short project but the, our students really uh, put out some great effort and some of the best work I've seen goes on into these cards. Uh, the winner gets their own greeting cards, a box of 20 or 25. Um, uh, professionally made greeting cards and they're sent around the world because FLIR gives them up to their clients and their workers. And so thank you to FLIR, our part, partner corporation. So in addition to the foundational course Art 10, we also have four other courses and they used to be called Advanced Art, but we just took them down to sculpture, ceramics, drawing and painting. And in sculpture, it's a stand up course. It's not so much a sit down course, but you can do things like the, the monster behind me, the, the big dinosaur. One of our students wanted to make it. We said, we don't know how, but we'll figure it out as we go. So it's hands on, it's stand up, you get to move around. Another student did a cruiser that his grandfather uh, in the Second World War served on and then uh, handed it in for military studies with Mr. Schmiller's class. And it's got details of where the um, the planes come off and I think this picture is of the lifeboats that actually lower down and it's made out of a cardboard. It's about eight feet long. We can also do smaller projects. So we have guided projects for the art tens coming in or the, the grade tens coming in. Um, you can do small little projects. We can guide you until you, you get good ideas and you really want to go bigger. Um, but some of our senior kids or students um, want to go really big because they've done little small projects and it's the grade 12 year. You will be mixed in with the grade 12s and you get to learn from the senior students, not just the instructor and you learn more and you make better friends because they're in a different grade so they can take you under the ring. I shouldn't under their wing. I shouldn't say better friends, but you make different friends um, rather than just being in a grade 10 class. And it's a little bit intimidating, but our, our art 10s or grade 10s are, are ferocious. One of our senior kids uh, did a five foot long lion that she's working on right now. And she's also the one that um, did the, the puppet that I showed you earlier that turned into that mascot that you are about to see. Here's a four foot, five foot wide spider that's kind of crawling out of our ceiling that somebody made up. We also have cosplay. We can make stuff out of cardboard and uh, some of our kids sort of like that in between. They like the sewing portion, but they also like to just build big things out of cardboard. So there's a little bit of a, a um, an overlap, um, but this is something that the student did on their own. They made that little puppet I showed you and then um, used the same techniques to make a mascot head on their own time. This is after the course finished. They did this in over um, like in the next semester. So I was really proud of that and I thought, you know, thank you, Miss Kilby. You probably helped them out a lot, but uh, it's wonderful to have that uh, overlap. We also have drawing, which which sort of is a little bit more of a giddy up from the Art 10. Once you know how to draw, we then turn you loose. And part of what we do is we give you more materials and bigger projects or smaller projects. Um, one of the projects we had before is you have to take uh, someone who's helped you through in life and do a portrait of them and then give it your portrait away. So you're working 20 or 30 hours and you give the portrait away. And this is for one of our math instructors who is really instrumental in a young man's life and he was happy to give away his work. Just fantastic uh, gesture. We do skull drawings, we do um, uh, colored pencils, pastels, things like that. Lots of skull drawings. We have a good skull collection of cows and things like that. Um, and some uh, pastels, we copy historical works uh, with lots and lots of practice. So whatever sort of makes you happy, we try to keep you in that realm. As long as you're working, you're doing a good job, we're happy, we're happy to have you. But this is more of a sit down course. Uh, sculpture and ceramics is more of a stand up course where you get to move around. If you like sitting down and drawing, this is for you. It's like just putting on the headphones and zoning out. We also have a painting course coming up. Yeah, more drawings. Yeah, there's just amazing work coming out from the students. 
and the painting Miss Ellsworth, who also teaches down here and um, some say does most of the work down here. I'm just kind of the, the, the court jester, but uh, Miss Ellsworth is getting incredible and tremendous results with some student work. And they, it, this is um, in advanced painting or just painting. You don't need a lot of experience. You just need to want to learn. And again, we have grade 12s in with grade 11s and grade 10s. So you get the full gamut of people teaching other people. And you get to learn how to mix things and get out of uh, colors and get out of your comfort zone. We also have ceramics, so you can take sculpture, drawing, painting, and ceramics, as well as Art 10, and some of these other great options that are being offered tonight. And ceramics is uh, just clay. You're working with clay. You're working in texture, how to carve. We have pottery wheels. We have students doing big um, uh, romantic characters. We have- Two, two minutes, Mr. Wolski. Thank you, appreciate it. You bet. We have people on the pottery wheel. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and some of these pictures are pre COVID, but it, again, it shows how kids are working together and, um, you know, making friends and talking and just it's it's pretty casual, but you're working hard. Uh, where are we on? OK, uh, self portraits we can do. And there are two last um, pictures. We've had Ophelia, the owl from the Calgary Wildlife Rehabilitation Society in almost every semester for about five or six years can't do it because of COVID. And um, we, as many other of the options, like to call in visiting artists, but we, we'd have the owl come out and we have the kids draw the owl for a morning. And the owl, Ophelia, came out so many times that uh, we got an honorary diploma from Centennial High School. So as far as I know, that's the only uh, great horned owl that has a high school diploma. Okay, and please contact us. Um, we can't wait to see you folks. And like I said, there's a ton of great options. Please consider this one as well. Thank you.